Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Josh. So today let's talk about Filecoin and the why 2023 is a new beginning for Filecoin. So before I dive into that, um, let's do a quick recap on what Filecoin do and its history. Um, so Filecoin is founded by this guy, John Bennett and his team at Protocol Labs. And uh, their, um, their first work started in May 2014. That's really a while back. It's a mainnet launch was on October 15, 2020. So it's really a while back. And uh, so Filecoin is not really new to the market. It's been there for two and a half years. So what does Filecoin do? So Filecoin do, I found this one is very interesting. So Filecoin is a, a Dropbox, but on a blockchain. Um, no, that's incorrect. So Filecoin can do more than just a Dropbox. A Dropbox is pretty much a place to save your files, your pictures, your videos, and that's about it, right? Uh, Filecoin's goal is to decentralize the internet. So what that means is the current internet is very centralized. It's owned by a few groups like Amazon, Microsoft, and, and Google. They own 66% of the market share. So that's actually uh, very dominant, right? So Filecoin tried to change that. So it wants to make the internet uh, not owned by uh, single companies. That's essentially what that means. So then, okay, let's have a look at how Filecoin can do that and it's a major component, right? So Filecoin's first pillar, they call this one pillar, is a storage. So to save all the internet data, Filecoin really need a huge space. Um, so the first pillar is really to grow the storage uh, capacity. So it's saying in which anyone with the necessary hardware can join and provide a storage service to store data on Filecoin user enter storage deals with these storage providers. So that's essentially what I do uh, to grow the uh, storage uh, capacity. That's the first thing uh, Filecoin want to do. So how much capacity does Filecoin has today? Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Hope I got the right page. So let's have a look here. So this is a fi Firefox. Um, you can see the current storage power is 20 EIB. That's 20,000 petabytes of storage capacity. And that is huge. So um, according to some of the research, uh, so 3% are actually used. So you can see there's still um, plenty of space to be consumed. So that's the first uh, pillar. I hate to use pillar. It's actually just the, I'll say it's the components or infrastructure. So what's the, the uh, second one? So the second one is the retrieval. Just think about it. You save the data on the Firecore network. So what can happen next? You need to uh, retrieve it. So, but how to do that, right? Um, it's, it's through uh, this, um, technology called the CDN, Content Delivery Network. Uh, basically, what that means is um, when you request a file, you don't have to go all the way to the origin, which is the orange box here. You go to the uh, closest um, node and grab a copy of your data from there. It works very, very fast. So that is a, um, a mainstream technologies um, uh, widely used for the streaming companies. Um, so that's definitely something necessary for, um, for the storage network. So, okay, I'm not gonna go through details. So this is very technical, um, but okay. Now that's the first point I want you to know. Why 2023, right? Because 2023 is the retrieval market will be online. So people should be able to retrieve their files in 2023. You may ask why I can't do that before. So uh, before uh, you still can retrieve your file, but it's through this thing called IPFS gateway. If you see this one here, um, IPFS gateway no longer required in retrieval network in June, 2023. So um, IPFS gateway is still a centralized device and uh, Firecon uh, doesn't want to 
uh, use that. So that will be removed and we can have a full retrieval um, um, market. Why I keep saying it's a market? Because you can select who to retrieve the file for you. Um, that is essentially how that works. So this one is called, um, I'll just highlight this one here. So it's called Saturn. So that's the project name. Uh, project Saturn just means the decentralized CDN network. And hopefully we're gonna see that one go live in 2023. Um, yeah. And the third one, this is also the last one, but also the most uh, important one, is a uh, computation. You might get confused, like a, a Falcon network, it just sounds like a bunch of disk. Where does the computing power uh, comes from? Actually, that's incorrect because Falcon network actually has a lot of computing power as well. Um, let's have a look. So when your storage is, uh, sorry, when your data is saved on the Falcon network, um, every day the Falcon node has to uh, provide the proof and to submit a proof you need to uh, do a lot of uh, computing work uh, for the uh, for the hash value of your data so um, every Falcon node is actually has a storage server and also they have the uh, the GPU server as well so there's a lot of computing power so in this uh, pillar Falcon want to compute the data on its network it don't, don't just want to passively save that. It can just uh, um, compute the data and get value and generate more, um, um, more results. So one thing I would like to people to know is that this, uh, this network called Balachuhu, the name is a bit odd, right? But what this one actually do is really, really cool. So this is a, a website called the ba Cha Hell. I think I mispronounced the name. So basically, it is a platform for fast, cost efficient, and secure computation by running jobs where data is generated and stored. Right? So basically, uh, with that, um, you can compute the data when you upload to the network and just get the result. And uh, it's allowed to I think I read somewhere um, it's allowed for the parallel computing, um, which is required, um, sorry, which are used by um, some really large companies. I can't find where it is, but um, I read somewhere. Anyway, let's continue. So, yeah. So let's have a look of what's next. So 2023, there's another uh, milestone has reached, which is, I, I, I'm going to skip all this one, that one just the capacity for the Filecoin, we know it, uh, it's, it's doing well, guys, you can see the picture, um, the data ingestion, um, uh, sorry, that's a project uh, building on the Filecoin that is exceeded uh, 600, that's a lot, and I'm just going to quickly show you something. Okay, sorry, sorry, my apologies. I promise you. Okay, FVM. Now, that is something really, really exciting, and that you need to pay attention to this one. This is really the game changer. Um, this will change the Filecoin uh, token um, value. So, what is a Filecoin a virtual machine? So, it's basically a smart contract like Ethereum, um, but it can't read the user's data, right? I'll just do a highlight here. But it can it can defi but defining how it can automatically or conditionally behave after being stored on the network. So I'll give you one quick example, right? So if I have some data and currently saved on the Firecall network, and uh, um, I want to I want to save for fi for five hundred days, right? Without FVM, at the end of the five hundred days. I have to manually to uh, renew that. Uh, that is a manual process. But with the FVM, it can automatically renew the smart contract and uh, for another 500 days. So if you think about it, I will have a perpetual storage and it will just, um, it will just uh, last forever 
Of course, I, I'm going to pay for that, but that is a very good uh, use case. So I think it mentioned here to achieve data redundancy. So start data with 10 different storage providers. Yeah. So that is the FVM can do. Um, you can see another thing is here called the data Dell. So as far as I know, uh, Firecom probably is the only network you can do that. So what is a data doll? So data doll um, is actually you pull the data uh, together for a common uh, mission, and then um, you can compute the data, you can uh, analyze the data, and then um, you can share the, the results. That's essentially what that do. So a good example for this one is, I always think about, let's make a movie, right? So you bring the music, I bring the graphics, and somebody else maybe bring some other uh, items. So when we combine them together, the end result is a movie. I know this uh, sounds a bit weird, but that's essentially what DataDAO is. And there are so many use cases uh, from uh, uh, scientific uh, research to um, uh, big data. So there's a lot of commercial values actually on this one. Yeah. So guys, today is only the first half. Um, we go through like a, why is uh, 2023 is different. So the two things, one is uh, FVM and uh, um, or um, FVM slash uh, computing. That's the first, first uh, difference. And that is happening in 2023. And the second one is the project Saturn, the CDN. That will happen in 2023 as well. So with these two, Falcon is much closer to become a, a commercialized uh, product. Um, so I gi I give you one example. So if you have a look at this one, this is another news called the Falcon Web Services Launch Open Source Alternative to Cloud Giants. This is a huge step as well. So. You might hear about AWS, right? Um, this multi-billion dollar uh, cloud company, right? And uh, what Falcon can do is to challenge this market uh, and become an open source alternative. So if you think about it, just if uh, if uh, the, uh, the FWS can grab a slice of the market, that worth millions and millions of dollars. So that's all. Uh, because the FVM and uh, compute is start to become available in 2023. That's why, guys, 2023 is definitely a new start of Filecoin. Um, so today we went through the, the technical part. So next week I'll do the part two, which is um, the token value, like why the token value will change in 2023 as well. Okay, I hope you enjoy my video. Um, if you uh, like the, uh, the uh, contents, uh, please uh, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.